we're back for Predicting Wind Part 2. And today we're going to talk about the article that I wrote for Predicting Wind for Wind Driven Water Sports. And we're going to relate that to the websites that I use to help get more sessions and more sessions with bigger wind. So we'll head over to the computer and dive right into it. So at the top, you can see the 12 tabs open that we talked about in Predicting Wind Part 1. If you don't know what those are, go back and watch Predicting Wind Part 1 right now before you watch the rest of this video because it will help you a lot. I also now have open my website at www.ericthebige.net. So right now, make sure you have all 13 of these tabs open. Now go down to Articles down to weather, over to weather forecasting for wind-driven water sports in western New York. Click on that. That's going to take you to an article that I wrote about five years ago. And what I've done over the last five years is I've improved this article by taking some meteorology classes, talking to professional meteorologists, making observations in my area, talking to other kite surfers, wind surfers, etc. And I originally wrote this to help myself so that I don't forget everything I've learned about predicting wind. But someone said, you know, why don't you share that with the public and maybe it can benefit some other people. So that's why I put it here on my website. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare this article to the 12 tabs that we talked about in predicting wind part one. So let's just start with the first tab. The first tab that we talked about is iwindsurf.com. So open this up on your computer right now. Now the first thing you'll notice is my favorites, which you're looking at, are organized from west to east. And the reason I do that is because our cold fronts come through from west to east. So I can look upwind at locations west of Buffalo, New York, and I can see what the wind is doing there when the cold fronts are coming through. And then I can look over here at the radar and I can see what the rain is doing. Now you'll notice in this particular picture that there's this line of rain showers right here in Canada. That is the cold front. So when you're looking at radar and comparing it to I wind surf, which we have here, and then also comparing it to the fronts map, which we have here, the, then you can see, for example, that the cold front uh, is located this blue line right here. And that is predicted to be at 2 p.m. So when I look on the radar, this now right now it is 10 a.m. I can see that the cold front is back here and seems to be about on schedule with the forecast from the National Weather Prediction Center. And you can also click over here and look at the cloud cover where you'll see these thicker clouds right here are the rain showers that we saw on the radar. So then once you have an idea where the cold front is, you can come back to iWindSurf, look at the wind meters in the area where the cold front has already gone through and see how the wind is responding. And that will give you a better idea of what you can expect when the cold front gets to where you live or where you're riding. This is a very useful concept and it's actually pretty simple. Just look at the cold front and the National Weather Prediction Center, look at the radar for where that cold front is, um, shown by the rain line, and then use the wind meters at locations upwind to help give you an idea of how the wind is producing, how the wind is responding at those locations, and that will help you to better predict what's gonna happen at your spot. And if you then click back to the article that I wrote and scroll down to number one where it says wind speed and direction, you'll see that I describe in this area the concept we just talked about with using the cold fronts, the radar, and I wind surf to help to do some predicting. And also if you scroll down to the very bottom uh, in the last paragraph, last two paragraphs, I talk about cold fronts in a little bit more depth there as well. So we'll move on to the next part in a couple of days.